Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here, and today I have a, when my chair is not working well, today I've got a very special guest. All the guests are special, but this particular guest I've worked with in the past, Alden Miller, you do a great job. You videotaped me many times, making me look good for some of the pitches I've done um, in the past. So thank you for coming on InventRight TV. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start at the very beginning because we've worked together off and on. I saw your work early on. Uh, it was spectacular. You really know how to capture a moment, capture. You, you can tell a story with video. I've seen it. You're a professional. So let's talk a little bit about what you do and maybe a little bit about the history of, of why you're doing video and you're so good at it. I like that plug, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll try. I don't know. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing video at some way, shape, or form for uh, quite a while, probably twenty-ish plus years. Um, and uh, I really got into documentary work and helping uh, small businesses and startups and inventors and stuff like get their story told. Because in my mind, some of the greatest stories of all the cool things and innovative things that are happening are those kind of people. Um, and so just like helping them amplify and get their story told is something I really like to do, enjoy doing. Okay. Well, why that's so important to inventors now, and that's why we're doing this video. Yeah. Um, these video pitches, right? Yeah. Um, I've talked a lot about sell sheets, having a one page advertisement. Maybe you're at the very top, it has your value proposition, your one line benefit statement, maybe a 3D rendering or a picture of your prototype. but it doesn't sell that well, okay? Yeah. Video, we've found, um, sells extremely well. If it's done correctly, there's the yeah. catch. And that's why we're having you on um, yeah. to talk about a video pitch, mm -hmm. okay? So yeah, so I mean, it's one of those things like, like a lot of things, you just wanna stand out from everybody, like from the rest, of the, the rest of your competition. Like, and a video is the way to, is the easiest way for, to make that happen. Because with the video, you're going to be able to show off yourself and show off your product or your idea um, in a succinct way. Okay. Well, that's that's the key words here, isn't it? Um, you, you basically have a minute. We're, we're telling all inventors, if you're watching this, this video um, segment that we're doing, we're talking about a video pitch, a one-minute video pitch where you can sh show a problem for maybe, I don't know, 15 seconds, and then maybe for the, the rest of the 45 seconds, you show the benefit of your invention. Pretty simple, right? Yep. Um, in theory, it's very simple, okay? So that's why we're talking about this, because we wanna share with everybody who's watching today a little bit what some of the issues are and we, and what they need to be careful of. Okay, so first of all, we all know video, one minute video pitches work because the DRTV uses them. In fact, James is gonna show a couple clips. It works. Um, they're kind of cheesy a little bit, but that that format works. Um, also, James is also gonna show one of our students that um, just licensed a, a kitchen product by doing a one minute video pitch. But we'll, we'll show it and everybody's gonna be amazed because it really demonstrates yep. problem and solution. I wanna talk about one thing real quick. How important, because you've learned this now about the sale, the art of the pitch. You put these videos together. How important are those videos? And if they work, do they actually use kind of your storyboard of a video to sell the product? Yeah. Um... I think it's crucial. Um, I always felt like, um, you know, marketing was the missing thing that most designers really need some decent marketing, but I, I never felt that I was that good at it. And what, what I learned at Inventrite was to, to kind of copy the format, not necessarily the message, but copy the format. So in, in my videos, what I often do is for about nine or 10 seconds, I show a problem. And then I immediately show the solution, which is the DRTV format. If you've ever seen a, you know, DRTV commercial, they all use that same formula. So I started using that. And um, that's what I did for the mandolin that I licensed to Joseph Joseph. And um, when it when they put the video on the website, they actually used the same format and repurposed my video to, to launch and, and it got some great feedback. So 
yeah, it's it's definitely a, a format that works. It communicates very quickly. Alden, you're a professional at this, and mm-hmm. that's the reason why we're having you on. Yep. Um, we just did a series called Video Pitch, where there, I, I think there's 20 videos of you explaining how to do this correctly. Yes. Because it's not, it sounds easy, it looks easy, and some people can do it, but there's some things that are important, right? That yeah. you need to be prepared. So let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about equipment for just a minute. Yep. Can, can I do it on my iPhone? I mean, can I shoot it you on my iPhone? Can. You definitely can. And that's, that's one of the, the, that's the good and bad about it is that everyone has the technology in their pocket to make the video that you need. Okay. But the problem is, is that everyone has the same technology. So you need to do it well and think the things through before you just go throw stuff off online. Okay, so you have to prepare. And one of the first things you talk about in this this series of videos is really putting together kind of preparing ahead of equipment. And you talk about the lighting, you talk about the sound equipment, you talk about preparing that day with the talent, you talk about putting people in the right mood so they're not stressed out. You're really setting the stage, but before that yeah. happens, you really need a script, don't you? You need a storyboard yeah. of what you're gonna shoot. Why is that important? Well, especially if you only have 60 seconds to tell the story, right? Um, and if you think of uh, in an action movie, when you see like images like flashing really quickly, um, the average length of a clip that people are used to is about four seconds. So you only have 20 different shots to show. It actually let me like 15 to 20 different shots to show within 60 seconds. Okay. And so you have to really have to choose on what is the 15 pictures you want to show mm. in your in your video. Okay, to tell your story. Okay, yep. so that's really important to do a storyboard. I know you talk a lot about that. So you're really prepared when you get there. I want to talk about lighting for just a minute. Yes. Okay, because that's pretty important. And as yes. you can tell, I probably have too much light in my room at the moment, although I've, 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 I'm trying to fix that. But it's natural lighting the best in your opinion because for me if if the lighting's coming at the right angle maybe it's on my face or talk a little bit about that natural lighting to get a good shot um natural lighting is actually one of the easiest ways to use it as long as you are uh being smart about it so for example like i'm actually right by a window as well so you can see like half my face is lit up really well so you know for an example of this in an actual video, like probably, I probably wouldn't do this. Okay. I'd probably shade the window a little bit. So maybe some light was coming in, but not all of it. Got it. Um, just to kind of give a little nice, like, uh, fade across my face. Okay. So it's not a very sharp line. Got it. Um, just a random example. Um, you don't want to necessarily be so close to a window, maybe stand away from a window on the other side of the room. Okay. Um, you want to face the wind. You, um, you actually want to face the window. You don't want to have a video where, the sun or the the window is behind you, okay. because then you're going to silhouette. And you're going to look like you know the six o'clock news on the in, anonymous tip guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that the lighting is so important, especially if you're an amateur photographer. We all are with the, a phone now, but yeah. I can tell if the lighting is right, it, it's magical. Actually, it yeah. really works well. So you really don't need expensive equipment with lighting if you just shoot it at the right place. Is there a way of testing that first? Should you shoot a little bit first or maybe the day before to know if that definitely, time of day is going to be good? You can definitely do uh, test shots. And you can do test shots. And uh, I think we might be talk, We might talk about this in the videos, is that when you're doing storyboards, you can actually just take pictures with your phone. Oh. Of like, oh, I'm going to do a storyboard right there. Like, so you don't even have to draw. Of like, I don't like drawing. I don't want to show people my stick oh. figures. Just take a picture. Oh. Um, like, here, like say we're doing something in the kitchen. All right, shot there, and then okay, then we're gonna move over to the sink, and then we can do that. Um, and then at the same time, you can check your lighting and see what you have to go with good. right from the start and before that, you end up having to get anything extra. That's a really good tip. Let's talk about um, for just a minute sound. Yep. Because I think that's a really big deal, uh, the sound quality. Um, and I know I've, there's different types of mics. There's lapel mics. Yep. There's a, yep. the little mics that on your cell phone that kind of shoot out a little bit to pick it up. Yep. But let's say I think sound is so important. Is it sometimes it's better to do a voiceover? Yeah. So sound is the most important thing of your video because um, if you're, you know, if you do have a little bit overexposed or kind of shadowy and things like that, people will live through that. But if your sound is uh, too soft or too loud or just 
there's too much wind or whatever, people are going to stop watching it immediately because it just annoys them so much. Um, so voiceover is a really good reason or a really good thing to do in your video because while you're shooting, you don't even have to worry about it because you can take a separate day to focus on the script of your video. Oh. You can sit in a quiet room, you okay. know, maybe by your computer or or a, in a bedroom or something like that. And uh, and obviously, if it's you know voiceover, we don't really care what it looks like. So who know who cares what's going on in the in the okay. room that's going on? Um, but yeah, how do you match um, if if I'm going to do my storyboard for my shots? Yep. Do I write the script there so they kind of work together as my guide? Is that a smart thing to do? Yeah, we actually we have a uh, a script designed for these types of shoots where there is a two column thing. So one column is the audio, so like what you, what the audience is going to hear. So that would be your script, and then the other side is the video, so describing what the shot is going to look like. Okay. So if it's talking about a dog, you know, like you see the dog, and then you hear the person talking about a dog on the one column and kind of goes back and forth. And so you can match up uh, the picture with the script, which in turn helps you immensely when it comes to the editing because you already have the blueprint right there. All right. You know exactly where to put the words because you just match them up with the pictures. Uh, perfect. Let's talk a little bit about shooting the right angles. Sure. Because I've realized if to make it really interesting, you know, you need a couple different angles. You maybe a close up, maybe far back. I mean, how important is that? Because sometimes I see these videos where it's not interesting. I mean, it's one yeah. shot and that's all I got. Yeah, it's uh, you really want to mix things up. Like I, you know, I mentioned like the the four or five second thing of like you know, kind of changing things up. Um, your viewer is going to essentially get bored. Their eyes are going to get bored, and they're going to start looking at things around the screen that you know you don't want to look at. Mm-hmm. or you don't want them to look at. So you keep changing the shot around so their eyes are moving and you're, stay, you're keeping them engaged. Um, and so you want to mix that up with uh, mm-hmm. wide shots and medium shots and close-ups. And you don't want all wides because that's really boring. It's like really like okay. But at the same time, you don't want all close-ups okay. because the close-up is kind of like the exclamation point or oh. like you know, yelling of a, of a sentence in a, in a oh. paragraph. So if you're doing that, you're essentially yelling like all caps lock, you know, yeah, writing your emails to people. So that's a little too much too. Is that, could you consider that a B-roll when you shoot the different angles? Is, what is a B-roll? Yes. Yeah, I hear a B-roll all the time. What is a B-roll? Oh, I, I actually, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that is one of the terms that have leaked into the general public, right. which I actually hate that term, but <laughs> it comes from like the news, news story days, but like really, you know, very short uh, history of it is that the A-roll is the, is the interview, like when the reporter goes and interviews the person. Okay. And the B-roll is the second stuff, the secondary stuff that they get of like, you know, shooting the accident or shooting like the cop okay. at the corner or shooting the person like, uh, and things like that. And so that's where that comes from. Okay. Um, it's just like, because it's the second, it was the right. second role of the film. Okay, the so I won't use that anymore because I always, I say, here's my B-roll all the time. I know, I, like, I, it's hard. Like, and then like, I try, to, I try to mix it up with different terms and they don't know what I'm talking about. And right. I just like B-roll. And I'm like, okay. oh yeah. yeah. Like, all right uh, um, well like the secondary stuff the act the action the action footage okay for your for your stuff let's talk about the editing for just a minute sure. here. okay because um editing for someone like me it's a little complicated mm-hmm. but it's not that complicated once you get involved is it or no. do you have to have fancy equipment i mean can i can i find some of the editing tools online and can i learn that myself or how yes. hard is that to do so uh, there's there's a you know there's probably two dozen different type of editing uh, programs out now. Okay. When you come out with like if it's something where you're going to try to edit off of your phone or your iPad or your desktop computer or something like that, um, there's a lot of different options, and some you know and they will all get you to where you need to go for the most part. Okay. So I mean it's it's really whatever like comfort level you have. Okay. Um, there's some that like. You know the one that we that we talk about in our in our video series uh, is called Adobe Premiere, and when you open it up, there are a bunch of little boxes and things, and you know it looks really intimidating at first. It does, it does. But if you just go step by step, like, like I'm okay. just all I care about is this little box of where my f- clips are, and okay. then I'm going to put it down in this little box right here. And if you just worry about the parts that you need, you know that you're focused on, okay. like there's other things that you just don't even need to worry about for these kind of videos. So let's say I'm watching the video series, there's 20 video, videos, I shoot it, I've got all my equipment, you're saving me money and time, you're showing me exactly what to do. Yep. And let's say at that point I decide, hey, I don't wanna do the editing. 
Yeah. I can send I can find someone like you that could put it together, but you've really yep. given me the roadmap to give all the assets to you to do yep. a really good job because you can't do that yourself and other people can't do that because they're not there. Yeah. Although, although you could ship the product to them, but people can actually do this. Yes. Correct? Okay, because we see a trim, we see so many products get licensed now with these videos. Yeah. And some of them are done extremely well and some of them are just not great and I don't think I think they people aren't watching them so anyway that's why we're doing this video series I want everybody to check it out we'll have a link here to to take a look at it Alden thank you very much for putting this all together because it's so important for inventors to do it correct yep right and if it's, if it's the number one tool to license ideas you have to figure out how to do this or get someone to do it for you or you have to be in control of that situation it's it's yep so important so all right Alden thank you very much we'll have you back on we'll do a, more about these videos I love these one minute video pitches everybody check it out <laughs> Alden thank you for coming on awesome thank you guys thanks for having me